Welcome back. Podcast number two. Wow, you guys have been amazing and awesome. And I, uh, so many of you have come in and said you've had coffee with me. And I'm, I'm like super jealous. I want to actually ha sit down and have coffee with all of you guys. Um, it's just been a fabulous time for my first time out. Um, I think that you who watched it out there knew that I just felt compelled to do this podcast and I still feel ultra compelled. Not really sure why, but just cannot hold back the reins of the horses. So here I am back for number two. Welcome. Thank you to all the people who tuned in, all the people who subscribed, all the people who watched. I hope you had a really good time. It occurred to me between the last podcast and this podcast, which has been about two weeks, it occurred to me that I didn't really talk much about uh, myself at all, really just kind of focused on the things at hand. So I wanted to take just a, a minute this time around to tell you sort of my knitting journey. I thought about, you know, going through the resume bullets, but good Lord, who wants to hear all that? And I thought you might want to know about how I got here to be a crazy, wild, passionate knitter. And my story goes something like this. My grandmother, um, my, on my mother's side, she was the woman. She gardened, she had three gardens, she quilted, she sewed, she sold all my mother's clothes. She was just that child from the Depression era who, if you wanted it, you made it. And I grew up around her, watching her quilting till all hours of the night after she'd been a crazy woman in her garden and putting up, you know, 64 quart jars worth of tomatoes in the hot, you know, hot heat in North Carolina. So I just grew up with her and you know, when you, the grandkids get on your nerves, what do you do? You put something in their hands. So she tried everything. She tried sewing first and I just like a little cross stitch, the kind that you have a stamp. So I love that. And then she tried embroidery. I did that for a little while. And as I got older, I sort of tried it all. I tried sewing. Oh, not my cup of tea at all. I mean, I can sew a seam, but whoo, it's not my cup of tea. And then she put a crochet hook in my hand and things sort of took off and I became a granny square fanatic and did the whole granny square blanket thing. I think I still have that yarn. Yeah, it's moved around with me quite a lot. You know, why do we hold on to stuff like that? Anyway, so my children came along. I have two beautiful daughters and things like that just sort of took a back seat. We'd moved a couple times. I got a little bit older and I saw my neighbor out on her front stoop doing something with her hands. And it was, you know, that kind of neighborhood you just kind of said, hey, how you doing? What are you doing? So here I am lugging in groceries. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm knitting. I'm like, what? So I went over and I checked out and it was during the whole, the whole eyelash yarn craze. And she was knitting the scarf for this eyelash yarn and it was just so fun and funky and cool. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need to try this. Will you teach me? She said, sure. So we sat down. She's like, get yourself some needles and some yarn. So I did and we sat down and she showed me and I don't know what happened. It was like some switch went off in me and the next thing I knew my scarf was done and I was going back to buy more and I ran into her one day and she's like what are you doing I'm like I'm on my second scarf she's like are you kidding me I'm like no I'm having such a good time and after that it was just a crazy run I just love how knitted projects their final projects look. I just, I love that look. I love that finished quality that, kn that knitting has. And, you know, in my mind, I just thought that there were so many more options for knitting 
than crochet. I really loved how knit sweaters looked. So I, very soon I tackled a, a cable sweater, which I adore me some cables. Oh my gosh, I revealed last week, last time that my kryptonite was laced. Well, this, I am a cable fanatic. Love me some cables. Give me some Celtic cable and I am just, oh, I just love that look. So I made a cable sweater for my oldest daughter and it fit. It was a seamed in project. It was small, but I had seen it. I had to block it and I had so much fun. I moved on to some color work and then I picked up a sock and it was just, I was having so much fun. And I sort of kept it a secret. You know, we as women sometimes don't want to show our domestic side and so I never took it out in public. I, I kept a secret. I was in corporate America and I didn't want people to know how, how traditional I was. And so I just did it at home, was doing my thing, didn't really talk about it a whole lot, didn't go to a whole lot of knitting groups. And then um, I finally found this yarn shop close to where I was living and they were the coolest women who were there knitting and crocheting away and so anytime I could you know get away from my family for about an hour and that sounded wrong but you know you never want to leave your family they always need you and my kids were young so you know about once a month I would say okay honey I'd really like to go on this day can we make that happen and so I'd scoot out on a Saturday and plus I was working so I'd go over and oh my gosh it was just like my soul was so satisfied being there with those very cool women and doing the thing. And I just never stopped. I just moved around and I kept knitting and I moved around and I kept knitting and I kept finding yarn shops. And, and then we landed here in Virginia and I found the Knitting Sisters. And the Knitting Sisters was a really awesome yarn shop here in town and they had the cool staff. I'd go to, for the first time ever, I actually went to open stitching or knit nights, whatever you want to call it. And oh, they were working on the coolest things and it was just so much fun. And the owner at the time, Kathy Gill, she retired. She was announcing her retirement and just one of those things that the stars kind of aligned at the time that I was in. Uh, I wasn't particularly happy professionally and one night my husband and I we were just driving down the road and into the sunset like literally and I was just so unhappy and I knew that there was something else out there for me and it kept frustrating me that I couldn't find it. And he looked at me and he said, has Knitting Sisters sold to anyone? I said, no, because I had been to Knit Night the night before. And he said, why don't you go have a conversation with Kathy Gill? I said, are you crazy? Have you, do you have like some money squirreled away that I don't know about? Have, have you won the lottery? Like what, like, are you on crack? What's your deal? Where's my husband? Where are you? And that's how it happened. It just took one little nudge from someone who loved me and I found it. I found the thing that I feel like I was supposed to do because I'm having the time of my life. You know, there are some days it feels like work, not gonna lie. But then there are some days when you have the loveliest customers come in and a community just sort of springs out of your building of people who have nothing in common other than the fact that they, they work with fiber. And it is just the coolest thing. And so that's sort of my story. Um, it was really fun picking out a name for my shop when we decided to go for it. Um, my, my husband and I both have PR backgrounds. And so 
I knew the name was super important. And I wanted something fun. I didn't want my name in it. I just wanted something that would be sort of universally recognized. And so I started just creating lists. I just sat down and brainstormed every possible name I could come up with. I had a whole sheet of names, some of them. I mean, sometimes you gotta get to the trash to get to the gold, you know what I'm saying? Or the diamonds. I, and let me tell you, there was some trash on that list. But boy, I, it was a whole sheet of names. I, I think I still have that somewhere. And I took the whole sheet of names to my, to my family council, my two daughters and husband, my best, my biggest cheerleaders and my best critics possible. And it was a thumbs down or thumbs up vote. I narrowed it down to five and I started floating out the five names to some other folks and the flying needles was born. And so from that point, you can see my little logo over here. It helps to, you know, have a PR background. My husband was like a demon and started, like I didn't even have to prod him. You guys know the honey-do list. You know how that works. Honey, can you do this? And that list never, ever, ever, ever gets done. But this like took no prodding, it took no nudging, it took nothing. He was a demon. He slaved over this logo for days, for days while I was off doing, you know, owner stuff, trying to find an attorney, trying to find a space, scouting out space, talking to banks, talking, writing up my business plan, oh yeah. And he was working too at the time. And so here he was all hunched over his computer and he comes over and he's like, honey, come take a look at this. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah. So I go over. It took my breath away. It, it absolutely took my breath away. And we have had so much fun with this logo. He, he built me an icon into my name and it's just been, oh my gosh, green and purple, like come on. Uh, that's like a no brainer. So we've just had so much fun on this ride. We've learned so much. And honestly, we thank the community that has come out and has supported us, a local yarn shop. It's not easy being a local yarn shop. There's, you know, online competition. Most people just wanna sit at home in their pajamas and not go out. I get it, I totally get it. But what a lovely community that has come out to support my yarn shop and um, and the community that's here. It's just been a wonderful, wonderful ride. If you've not been here, I hope you get the chance to come. It, we have a lot of fun here every single day. Um, my philosophy is if it's not fun, it's not worth doing. And really fun coincidence, really funny thing that I just found out, my initials for my yarn, my yarn shop, yeah, they spell out funny. Cracks me up every time, fun, funny, whatever. I don't care how you cut it. It's just fun. See? It's built into my name. Cracks me up all the time. So, <clears throat> that's a little about me. And I hope you enjoyed that story. You, you know, it wasn't all smooth sailing. But I just try to keep it a little light on the podcast. Because if you've ever tried to do something like this, it takes some elbow throwing. And there were some elbows thrown. But I did have a wonderful team around me. And I cannot thank... Um, a couple people enough. Jennifer Raines, who is a woman business owner here in town in Williamsburg, she was absolutely instrumental in pulling my dream team together to help build this wonderful space. Um, without Jennifer, and then I never would have found Jennifer if I had never had a little part-time job at Williamsburg Floral with some dynamite bang up folks and there's a lesson there is that you never know where life is going to take you and you never know what something that you think is ridiculous but you feel compelled to do you never know where it's going to lead you so if you go down a path in life and you just have no idea why you're down that that path just see it through it took me, it took me three years 
and those people at Williamsburg Floral, they took care of me in ways I cannot even fathom. So, long story short, running your own business is all about your community. It's all about the people behind you. It's all about the people who support you, the critics, the supporters, all of it. They're all there to be a whetstone for you to just get smoother and sharper and brighter. And there's a whole community that came together to get my doors open. And I'll share a little snippets of stories as we continue on this little podcast journey. But that's enough for that for today. So, um, my name is Susan. I'm the owner of The Flying Needles. I should have started with that. I apologize. We are located here in Williamsburg, Virginia. Thank you to everyone who watched the first podcast. Thank you to everyone who's tuned in for this podcast. And just a little preview, the third installment we have something very special planned. So just be on the lookout for that because it's coming up in two weeks. So that'll be fun. Just keep your eyes peeled for that. So today, um, I have a couple things that I want to show you. And I have some works in progress. I have a finished object. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Super excited about this finished object. Um, let me see. What else is on my cute little list here? Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about correcting mistakes because I had a correcting mistakes class this week. And I learned, I learned so much from the people who come to me and, and take my classes. So there's some things, some lessons learned that I'd like to share with you guys today. And then we have some Flying Needles inaugural retreat news to pass along to you. Let's start. Oh, I can't stand it. Let's start with our finished objects. Yes. Okay, so I have a bottle of water here. Let me cap this because I don't want it to turn over and cause like a disaster in the middle of this video. So last time I talked about the Find Your Fade project and how much lace was my kryptonite. That hasn't changed. What has changed is it's finished. Oh yeah. Came off the needles, blocked it this weekend, came back in on Monday and hung it on a mannequin. Oh yeah. It's done. Here we go. It's really long. Um, I will tell you that usually I block things on my guest bed. This thing was so big, I put it on the bed, and I was like, this is not going to be big enough. And I was in my the bonus room, you know, the room that's giant, that has, like, everything in it. It took the whole room. It, this thing's giant. It's just huge. And I went down a needle size, so mine is not as giant as some of the others have been. So here we go. I'm going to cover my face. Oh, do you see that? so beautiful it makes me so happy oh and all the yarns in my shop there's the spine I don't know if you guys there's a center spine and the spine it moves oh look at it oh I had so much fun with the color melt it was the only thing that kept me going through the lace. I'm like, just a few more rows. I can get to the color melts. That's a color melt. It was Andrea Mowry's term for blending the colors together. And as I mentioned last time, my shop colors are more of this time too. My shop colors are purple and green. So I have all the purples and all the greens. So here we are. I did start with and it has a tag on it because everything in my shop, yes, this is on my floor. Everything in my shop um, has a tag on it so you'll know what pattern it is and what yarn to use and what needles to use. So it starts with three Irish girls, seven summits. It's this rich royal purple. And then it goes to Madeline Tosh's The Madeline Tosh Raspberry Cordial. Sorry, I forgot my brain for a second. And it goes into, look at me, I'm like a little, oh, and it smells so yummy. 
Eucalon, Rapture, love that stuff. It goes into three Irish girls, Eilish. And then it moves into Dragonfly. Nope, this is the Malabrigo. I keep messing up. Indesita, Nikita. I pronounced it wrong last time. I do apologize. And then it goes into Dragonfly. Right there, that's a dragonfly. I'm not, I can't remember that colorway. Then it goes into Malabrigo's Mikita again, the Ojas, and it finishes off with Dragonfly's Villainous. Oh, I remember the dragonfly color, it's still Magnolias. That's it. And all the dragonfly that I use is Pixie. I just love it. I had so much fun with this pattern. We did this as a knit along for my shop that's finishing up at the end of the month. And there's a huge $150 yarn package that we're giving away for this knit along. And all you really have to do, nobody, you don't have to be here to win. If you cast on this project and you post on any of my any of my social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Ravelry, then you get qualified. So you could still cast on up until the, we're gonna pull on the 28th. So up until midnight on the 27th, you could cast on a Find Your Fade, pop some pictures in, and you'd be qualified for this $150 pack. This $150 pack is three Irish girls, and it's enough yarn to make a whole, a whole nother Find Your Fade. It's an amazing giveaway that three Irish girls sent our way. Um, Three Hour Scrolls is one of the folks who are coming. Carrie and Ellen. Carrie and Ellen. I, this is the second time I've done that. Aaron and Kelly, they're coming down from um, <clears throat> from Wisconsin. And they're coming, Wisconsin, Michigan. Josh is from Minnesota. Wisconsin. Three Hour Scrolls are coming down from Wisconsin. And they're bringing all the yarn. And so, as part of the promo for their arrival, they sent me this package, and they're coming down for the retreat on March 31st, the Flying Eagle, the Flying Eagles inaugural retreat. It's going to be a lot of fun. So that is my finished object that I wanted to show you. And so now, I'm going to show you a work in progress. Now, being a yarn shop owner, people often come into my shop, and they're like, did you make all these samples? No, absolutely not. My hand would be, it'd be the claw, okay? I, I would never, I, I, would, I would probably have to have surgery. I did not make all the samples in my shop. I have a lovely community who, <clears throat> a lovely community of knitters who are very good at what they do and they help stock my shop with samples. Um, where was I going with that? Okay, so anyway, being a yarn shop owner, sometimes it's really hard to decide with all the knitting that I have to do what I should do next. But I tell you, when I, 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 and there's also that time period when you finish a project and then when you cast on your next project, if I do not have an idea of what I wanna cast on next, right after I finish one project, it, it can, cause quite a lot of angst like I will get into some sort of crazy indecisive brick wall mode and I won't be able to cut through it and then I'm not knitting for a couple of days and then that makes me angsty and that's just that's not a good situation for a season to be in at all so as I was finishing up <clears throat> the find your fade I'm like, I know exactly what I wanna do next. So I had found this pattern on Ravelry and Brioche is just taking me by the shoulders, the neck, the head, and it's just leading me away. I cannot get enough of Brioche right now. I'm having so much fun with it. So I wanted to do Brioche increases and decreases and so of course you know where I went. I went to Ravelry. And I found this lovely lollipop hat pattern. And it just looks so fun. That was it. That was the one I wanted to do. 
I reached out to three Irish girls and said, hey, this is the pattern I want to do. Would love to do it in some of your yarn. It calls for a DK yarn. And lo and behold, they sent me yarn. So let me show you the yarn first. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, welcome to Blue Hawaii in Springvale DK. This yarn is so squishy. Look at it. Doesn't even it looks even like a party on it is. It's a it's a party ball. So there's Blue Hawaii. They sent me this. And then look at what they sent. It's a two color hat. And then they sent me this. <gasps> look at that! It's their kaleidoscope. Also in the Springvale DK. Oh my gosh, it's so squishy. It's so much fun. Look at it. Oh, it's so. I opened it and I was like, oh my gosh, this is perfect. This is perfect. It's going to be a fun hat. So, no sooner had I bound off that find your fade, gotten that sucker in the blocking water, I was off to the lollipop hat. Look at this thing. Are you seeing that? It is so much fun. Not only is it fun, it looks like a birthday cake. Does that not look like Brewster's birthday cake ice cream? Oh my gosh. Look at all those speckles. Look at that. It's so much fun. And have you ever knitted a project that you just can't put down? It like just grabs hold of you and it's like crack. I know you have. I know you have, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this podcast. And see, here's the flip side. Check this out. Everybody knows the key of brioche. Everybody, look, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. I've had so much fun. Now, I will have to say, yesterday wasn't so much fun. I had to unknit eight rows of brioche with five stitch, and f five stitch increases and four stitch decreases. Yeah. That was not so much fun. It took me almost a whole day to do that. But I fixed my mistake and I am off and running. I, I just, oh, I, with a big old pom-pom on top. Oh my gosh. And I have to say, I posted a Sunday knitting picture on my Instagram account with this guy on my ottoman. And people have just gone bananas about this hat. They just love it as much. I mean, just from the pictures, they love it as much as I do. It's just so much fun. So we're going to be teaching this as a class here, the lollipop hat. We have actually a series of classes for brioche. We have the beginning brioche stitch, which is, which is just a one session class, and it's one color, just so you can learn the technique of the brioche stitch and get that all down. And then the second brioche class we have is the lovely Gina's Gina's uh, brioche cap bri Gina's two color cow that's all brioche so that's sort of the next one where you start doing brioche in the round and you get that connection that's really fiddly at the starting point and then this is the third class the lollipop hat so where you start learning increases and decreases and then after this it's like off to the races you can just pretty much do whatever you want to do now so that is my work in progress. And I have to say, I don't know if any of you guys watch other podcasts, but I also watch Little Bobbin's Knits podcast. Oh, she just cracks me up. She's like one of the, I could just tell, she's just a lovely human being. And she just said the funniest thing about casting on knitting projects the other day. She, she said, I just want to have a, I can't even do it in this lovely English accent. I just want to have a casting on party. And it's just has like, makes me feel all bubbly and tingly and excited inside. And I was like, oh my gosh, you are so right. It totally does. It's like a, it's like a grown up party all the time when I'm casting on. So for this lollipop hat, it was just like squeal city. It was like I was opening Christmas presents as I added the colors. Oh, and all those speckles, the red, look at it. Look at that speckle. Oh, so pretty. So let me get back on topic. I apologize. So that's my work in progress. Let's see. 
All right, I wanted to talk a little bit about correcting your mistakes in knitting. I have, I, most of the people in my shop, and I would say 90 to 95% of the people who come in my shop who are knitters, they absolutely detest making a gauge swatch. People, I cannot tell you if, enough. If you do not make a gauge swatch, you are committing an error before you even start knitting. I had a lady in this correcting mistakes class and she whipped out a hat and she was like, what's wrong with my hat? She's like, I've knit so many of these. I said, did you change yarns? And she said, yes. She's, and I said, did you change needles? She said, no. I said, did you do a swatch? She said, no. I said, why not? She's like, I hate doing swatches. I'm like, okay, which would you rather do? Would you rather knit a swatch? Or would you rather rip out an entire finished object? Which is it that you would like to do? And she didn't, she never answered. She never answered me. And there were five other ladies in this class and they just all chuckled and guffawed because they hate doing swatches too. And it is just so much easier to go ahead and do a swatch and know that your gauge is on point than to be 20 rows up in an all the round project with 300 stitches on the needle and then to rip that whole thing back because it's not turning out the way it's supposed to. So do me a favor. Rethink the swatch gauge, okay? The gauge swatch. It, it just, it's going to make your life so much easier. And if you embrace the gauge swatch, then it's going to be easier for you mentally. So just a little tiny piece of advice from a group of women who just, <laughs> you should have heard them make noises. It just cracked me up. So from a group of women who all had some issues with their knitting, had they done a gauge swatch, it would have saved them a whole lot of time. So out of the gate, try to not make a mistake and just bite the bullet, do it however you want to coach yourself up. Give yourself like an extra 30 minutes of knitting time if you do a gauge swatch. Do a reward system. Whatever you have to do, I highly recommend. Extra cup of tea, extra cup of coffee that day, whatever you need. That's what you need to do because in the end, it will be well worth your time. All right, so that's a little bit that I wanted to talk about today. Um, let me see here, okay. So, I know that you guys are looking at this shawl that I'm wearing. I know that you are, and I purposefully have not mentioned it because, let me just say, this is all part of the fabulous retreat that's getting ready to happen right here in Williamsburg at the Woodlands Conference Center. So, in addition to three Irish girls and you see that little thing over my shoulder that I haven't mentioned too? Yeah, that shoulder. Yeah, that's kind of hanging out there for a reason too. Haven't mentioned it either. So we'll start with that one first. So in addition to three Irish girls, who they are coming down from up north, we have the lovely sweater whisperer, Marie Green. The sweater that you see behind me on this mannequin is the Stillwater designed by Marie Green, who is Olive Knits on Ravelry. I don't know if you guys followed the Ravelry blog of the woman who knit the sweater in four days. That's her. Oh yeah, she's coming over from Oregon. She's coming to teach how to get your sweaters to fit. And this is one of her pattern designs. We did this sweater as a knit along in my shop. And we had so much fun because this sweater it has these great, they look like cables. Let me see if I can get that in. You don't know if you can quite see them. But they're fake cables. It's not real. They just sort of, it's yarn that moves in the pattern of the sweater. It's a total, it's a total awesome sweater. And it's knit top down. It's seamless. 
my folks had so much fun I'm pulling this off the mannequin to get this a little closer. Oh, look at that. That's not a cable. That's just yarn that moves with some lace. Oh yeah, there was some kryptonite in this too. And then you picked up the stitches on this band. Marie joined us for our casting on party via um, Skype. And we had a great time talking to her about her journey of four day sweater knitting. Yes, she ate. Yes, she went to the restroom. And yes, she slept. So she covered all of her basic needs during that time, but she did it in four days. I mean, not even. So Marie Green is also revealing a brand new sweater pattern at the retreat. It's called the Petra. She's only shown glimpses of it here and there, but she's revealing it on March 31st, right here in Williamsburg. Now, let's talk about the shawl I'm wearing. <laughs> so, Josh Reichs Rabinsky, he is in Minnesota. I call him the shawl shaman. He and I talked and I really wanted him to design an exclusive shawl pattern for the retreat that we would have exclusive at least for a period of five or six months. And he said, okay. And so here I am where I'm only going to show you the top. You can see pictures on Instagram. You can see pictures on Facebook, but this is all I'm going to show you. It's called Oscillate and it is three colors of fingering weight yarn. It's about 1200 yards and oh, it's so beautiful. It reminds me of a dragon wing. It is absolutely unlike anything I have ever knit before. A lot of my, a lot of my customers here have never seen anything like it. We are going to have so much fun. He is going to sign all the patterns and he, everyone who comes to the retreat gets a copy, a hard copy of the pattern. And then his class is going to be to cast this beauty on and get it started. So you are going to learn from the master himself. If you come to this retreat, we're going to have so much fun. After the retreat on March 31st, we are throwing a casting on party because you know, I can't just stop there. We're going to do a knit along of Josh's shawl. So, there's so much fun to be had here in Williamsburg if you're a knitter or a crocheter. Oh my gosh. So, I wanted to mention that. That's coming up. And tickets are still available. FlyingNeedlesYarn.com. Uh, you want to go to my retreat page and you can find out all about it. Full day and half day tickets are available. Now, before you do that, in addition to purchasing your ticket, there is also the opportunity to win one golden ticket to this event. And here is how you do it. If you go to our Instagram account uh, from now until midnight on March 28th, I'm sorry I'm reading because I can't remember all these details when I'm talking to you. It sort of scrambles my brain a little bit. So you want to follow the Flying Needles on Instagram. You want to post a photo or a video telling us why you should win and why you need to come to our retreat. In addition to that, there are two other things you have to do. You have to tag your photo or your video with hashtag FNY Retreat 2018 and then tag three friends. That's it. That's all you have to do. $225 value. You'll have access to three hours girls. You can go see Josh or you can go see Marie. I mean, it's just going to be a party. Not to mention that there's a seven vendor pop-up shop that's going to be at this sucker. So there's so much fun, so much excitement that's going to be going on for that event. There are ways to win extra entries. If you repost our posts on Facebook or Instagram, you get a, you get single extra entries for each one that you repost. So much fun. So we are going to pull that, that winning golden ticket on Facebook. First thing, March 29th. And then we're calling folks and reaching out to folks till we find a winner who can actually come. So, you can come to my retreat. If you can get here, you can get this ticket. $225 value. So much fun. Okay, let me see. Did I cover everything? Yeah, this is your little sneak peek. Yeah, so that's everything 
that I had to talk about today. Oh, there is one more thing. Um, so, for Josh's shawl, three hours girls put kits together for us. Now, I don't know if these colors are going to come out really well on my iPad, but here is the set that Josh knit with. It's called First Avenue. It's named after uh, First Avenue's venue up north where Prince used to play. So these colors are based on Prince. This is When Doves Cry. This one is Maleficent. Look at that. And oh, you guys are gonna love this. This is Dayglow. Oh yeah. See how it matches that pink wall back there? It's lovely. So that's the kit that he knit this shawl with. Then this kit is April in Paris. Look at this. Oh, let me get them all in there. Oh, yeah. So pretty. So pretty. So this color is Heathered Lilac. And all of these are in Three Irish Girls Adorn Lux line. And Adorn Lux is 85% merino and 15% nylon, 430 yards. This colorway is Grace Kelly. How lovely is that? And then this color is one of my favorites. It's called My Sharia Moore. Look at that cute, subtle speckle in there. Isn't that lovely? Just love it. There are two more. Almost done. Let me see. This is almost spring. Aren't there some great colors? It's such an unusual color combination. So, this is skinny jeans. This one is tiptoe through the tulips. Look at that. Ah, it's so pretty. And this one is rolling in the clover. Isn't that pretty? All right, last one. Here we go. This kit is called Hudson Bay. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? That's one end. This is the other end. Isn't that beautiful? So the one that's making all the color changes is called Cornucopia. Look at that fun color mix. Ooh, it's so pretty. Then we have... I think this is Ventus. Oh, it's just so pretty. And then, oh, one of, another one of my favorites. Is this Yukon. It's just this nice and gentle pop of color. It's just lovely. All three of those together are just so lovely. Okay, well, that's everything that I have for you today. I just love our time together. Just makes me think of you on the other side and what you're doing and what you're up to. I hope you're doing something fabulous while you're listening to me because um, that's the way it should be done. I started a Ravelry group for my podcast, so if you want to pop on over there and introduce yourself and let me know where you're from, that'd be great. And if you want to hit that subscribe button, that would be even greater. And then of course, like the video so I can know that you've been here and have had a good time. Uh, at any time, either on YouTube or on the Ravelry page, please feel free to give me some feedback. But most of all, thank you for joining me and having you know, this time with me. I just think it's so cool and interesting, this new platform that we're exploring together here. So thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. You have a great week because my new podcast will be coming out pretty soon. So... The third one, the third installment is going to be really fun. So, honestly, if you haven't subscribed, you really want to subscribe. There will be guests. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying anything else. No, you can't. You can't squeeze it out of me. Not telling you anything else. Okay. Thank you for coming. Have a great week. We'll see you soon. Bye, everybody.